Aloha, everybody, and welcome to Roots Tech Connect 2021. My name is Mia Jensen, and today I will be talking about beginner Polynesian genealogy. But before that, we need to say a little disclaimer here that the content of this video, as well as the thoughts, views, and opinions expressed herein, belong solely to the creator, me, and do not necessarily reflect the views of Family Search International and Roots Tech. And I also want to say, too, that the media and um, images and quotes that are said in here, um, you're more than welcome to screenshot them. And I hope that if you need to and feel like it, you can always pause the video and take the time to take notes and do whatever you want to do to help you remember what's happening in this video. All righty, so let's go ahead and give a brief overview of what's going to be shared today. So we're going to talk a lot about perspectives in Oceania in terms of genealogy. I put this in because I think it's really important to know how our ancestors view the world around them. And it also gives a better context when you look at records um, and you look at the oral genealogies that may happen or have in, in your family. So this will help you to understand them better. And then the next part, we will talk about tips, so specific tips on how to get started with your genealogy work, and also describing some written records and repositories that are very, very helpful for Polynesian work, and, and then also share a bit about an oral genealogy collection. Then lastly, we'll wrap everything up nicely by talking about how to record your history and also how important it is to do so. It's not just important to look for your ancestors, but it's also important to preserve your story and your history now. So again, before we get started, we need to go over some vocabulary as well as talk about a bit of the geography. So Oceania is split into three regions. This uh, came about post-colonization in Oceania. So those regions are Polynesia, Melanesia, and Micronesia. Today, I'm only talking about Polynesian genealogy, Though a lot of these concepts, especially in the tips and um, even the perspectives, they all kind of relate to Melanesia and Micronesia too. So if you're from those regions as well, don't fret. I hope this can still help you, uh, this presentation. Um, but it's also important too to note the indigenous terms of Oceania. So the term that was used, a universal term that's used to describe Oceania, especially from our ancestors as Moana. So Moana is a term that a lot of you probably know now because of the Disney movie Moana. It means ocean. So in Hawaii, we have this term called Moana Nuiakea, and it's a term used to describe um, Hawaiians, Kanaka Maoli, as people of the ocean, the ocean people, because that's where we come from, from the Moana. And, and then, but in terms of academia, we use the term Oceania now, um, Moana and Oceania are used interchangeably, and I'll use both of them throughout this presentation. And just know that they are mainly used to describe what region we're talking about today, which is Polynesia. So first off, let's dive right into genealogical perspectives of Oceania and the Moana. And as a disclaimer, this is not a comprehensive list of perspectives. There's only so much time I have to share perspectives and to present today, but I hope that if um, that you can also seek out more perspectives of your ancestors and how they view the world around them. So the first being genealogy is everywhere. It literally is everywhere around us. And that's how our ancestors view the world. They viewed everything as being related to one another. If you look at a pedigree chart today, at least out here in the West, we have humans listed in the pedigree charts, but in Oceania and in the Moana, genealogy, everything was in that pedigree. We were all connected to one another. So the stars were our ancestors. They were our relatives. They had names as well. The plants and the animals, everything around us had a genealogy and they were related to us to and us to them. Even the tides in the ocean, the fish, the coral reef, everything was connected to one another. Another perspective is time and space. Out here in the West, we view the future as in front of us and the past as behind us. And for example, we just came into this new year. We try to leave 2020 behind, right? That was a really hard year and things are still very hard for us now. And a lot of us just want to leave it behind 
and walk into this future and try to create a better time for us and for our families, right? But in Oceania, they believe that the past was actually in front of them and the future was behind them. Because if you really think about it, when you know the ending to a story or to a movie, you can describe it perfectly, right? Because you already know what's going to happen because it's either you've already seen it or you've heard of it, right? But if you haven't, you can make predictions about a movie, but then you probably won't get, you will probably won't nail every single detail or know everything that happens because you haven't seen it yet. So if you can see something clearly, then it must be in front of you, right? But if you haven't or you can't see something clearly, your future, then it must be behind you, okay? So with that understanding of time, our ancestors in Oceania strongly believed and practiced um, connecting to their ancestors because they knew their ancestors were in front of them, that they were there before them to show them the way. And as our ancestors have gone forth and as they shared their stories, spoke their names, talked of them often, and um, described them and their experiences, it blessed their posterity. And it also helped to prepare them for things that they cannot see. So can you imagine having an ancestor in front of you? You can't turn around to see what's behind you, but your ancestor is there and saying, hey, this is what's coming. Learn my story. Remember my story because my story will help you to move forward. And as things are made manifest in your life, your ancestors will be there to prepare you and to help you and show you the way and guide you throughout your life and through trials and tribulations. Now, this concept of space, though, it's not space as in like, I'm not talking about the air we breathe or like the universe. What I'm talking about is the space between one another, that relationships were very, very important in Oceania, that fostering the time and taking the time to foster your relationships with your brothers and sisters, your aunties, uncles, cousins, your grandparents. I mean, that's still prevalent and very, very strongly practiced today in Oceania. We care about our family relationships. We care about the space between one another. And going back a little bit to the concept of time. So if our past is in front of us and the future is behind us, what about the present? Well, you and I, we are all the living embodiment of our ancestors in the present form. So whatever I do, my ancestors do. Whatever my ancestors do, I do. And that's reflective in names as well. <clears throat> I'm named after one of my Japanese ancestors. And whatever, in, in Oceania perspective, whatever she did, I can claim I have done as well. Because we are one and the same. And whatever I do, she claims that she has done. And she has done because we are one and the same. We are all connected she is in me and I am in her perspective, right? So isn't that beautiful? It was a game changer for me when I learned that. Alrighty, another perspective, mythology. Now, mythology out here in the West is usually used or are stories that are not true, but they describe natural phenomenon or happenings and events that occur all around us. But you got to understand, in Oceania, mythology, history was named mythology, Okay. And that happened from colonization, that we have these histories. They are true. They do have seeds of truth within them. It's a matter of deciphering them and translating them so that we can understand because they are very deeply embedded in poetry. And poetry is full of symbolism, right? And wordplay and whatnot. So um, when you hear these stories of from Oceania, of mythology, just know that these stories, um, they do hold truth to them and that the demigods and gods that are described in them usually are honored ancestors. So they're describing the acts of your ancestors and what they have done. And again, it's described in their terms and how our ancestors view the world. So one great example is in um, the story of Maui, the demigod. Again, for reference, if you want to, in popular culture, go look at the Disney movie Moana. Um, Maui, the demigod, he roped the sun to slow it down because it was moving too fast in the sky. And the people were asking Maui, we need help because we the sun keeps moving so fast. We don't have time to sleep at night, to rest. 
So Maui roped to the sun, sewed it down. And if you were to take the story as that, like that's a pretty cool story, but you'd be missing a lot of gems and treasures behind it. So in Tongan culture, they believed that the sun was symbolic of a chief. And so if you put it in that term, in those terms, the sun was the chief. So the chief was moving too fast as in moving and working his people too fast and too hard. And he wasn't giving his people enough time and space to rest, to take care of themselves, to take care of their families, foster relationships. So Maui, an honored ancestor, came in and saved the day and made the chief slow down. So that is a family history story right there. Boom. Okay, another perspective, the nature of names. So names change throughout time, right? In Oceania, for an individual, they change throughout time. So remember that some names, if you listen to chants and they say different names of people, of ancestors, they might be describing the same person. So the perspective is that when you're born in Oceania, again, this is general, when you're born, you're born with a name. But then as you do things in your life, as you accomplish things or you overcome trials or you go through certain experiences, your name will change to reflect what you've done and what has happened to you. So it reflects your growth and your progress throughout life. And um, this was very common in Oceania and even too with chiefs and individuals taking on family titles, they would take on that family title and that would be their name from then on, right? Unless something happened. Um, <clears throat> so again, those family titles passed down generation after generation. That means that whoever had that title and had those names, they were the living embodiment of all others who had the same name in the same family, right? So, so much mana or power in that. So take the time to understand the nature of names in your family. Another perspective, the structure of the family. So families and societies, they they structured themselves in different ways. So we have some cultures that believe the women were the most powerful. Some believe the men were most powerful, maybe both equally. And they're reflective in their oral genealogies and in their histories. Next is a portrayal of genealogies. So the way genealogies are shared in Oceania, and it's still shared the same way today. We have um, chants and dances. So fire knife dancing is one way um, that promotes family history and also shares genealogy. We have the hula dance as well. <clears throat> but so those are just a few ways genealogy is shared and perpetuated today. But you got to understand, too, that um, there is a certain time and place to share your genealogy. They were sacred. They weren't just thrown around and just, you know, anybody and everybody can talk about it openly. Um, there was a protocol for it. So take the time to learn to the protocol of your culture and how they share their genealogies. And lastly, um, genealogies were a function of society. So imagine everything that you do in your life was determined by your ancestry because that's exactly how our ancestors lived. So here's a comprehensive list right here that I have that me and a coworker made um, about the functions of genealogy. So we have territorial organization, land ownership, inheritance, marriage regulation, social strata and control, political representation, few to support, ritual observance, religious beliefs and norms, intertribal relationships, trade and commerce, and warfare. Your genealogy determined all of this. Isn't that amazing? So this is how our ancestors function based on their genealogy. This is what they determined. Okay, now that you know some perspectives of your ancestors and how they view the world and use genealogies, let's dive right into how to get started on your Polynesian family history. So first, I always say this, first, you've got to know and learn the history. You can't do family history well if you don't know the history. So take the time to learn the history. There's many books and resources, articles, libraries, you name it out there that are dedicated to preserving and as well sharing Polynesian genealogy and family history and history specifically, right? So I wanna highlight too that it's important to, I know a lot of people, there's a lot of debate between learning 
and um, taking in resources and articles and books from non-Polynesians. There's a lot of debate behind that because their perspective really is different of our culture. So I would say that make sure you take a look at works that were created by our own people too. Because it's important to learn our history from our own people as well. Take in both, but make a special um, a special emphasis on learning the history from our own people. Next is to create research objectives. This will help you to stay focused in your work. So what I like to do, and I like to tell a lot of friends and family that when you want to do family history work, make a list of what you want to learn. So it can be from like, I want to learn where my name came from. I want to learn where um, this health problem came from in our family. I want to learn more about where, what, village my grandma is from. I want to learn where the family title comes from. So yeah, make a list. And then when you make that list, decide, <clears throat> choose one or two to work on at a time. And that'll help you stay focused. And make sure you have that list in front of you so that you remember and you can always go back to it. The next thing, so start with yourself because you'd be surprised how much you know already and take the time to write it down. So you can write down on anything. I have like I carry journals with me all the time. I have my phone. I write it down in my notes app, open up a Google Doc or Word Doc and just start writing things down. So identify what you know, write it down. Next, talk to your family. If this is possible, I understand some of y'all watching may be um, adopted. Some of y'all have family strains. You know, the list can go on and on. But if it is possible, reach out to your family and talk to them and ask them the questions about your ancestors and ask them questions specific to your objective as well. Next, keep a record of your work. Document all that you do because it's really frustrating and it can be a waste of time for you if you keep going and looking at the same thing over and over again um, because you forgot that you looked at it. But writing it down and having a neat like spreadsheet of it or even like a journal of where you look can help you stay focused and concise in your work. The next, research rich in records. These last three works are gonna go a little bit more in depth in the next few slides. So look at rich in records, look at oral genealogies in your family, and then record your own history. So let's dive right into the last three points here. So access rich in records. There's actually a lot of rich in records of Oceania out there. So I would definitely take the time to look at rich in records and a few places to look at include family search and ancestry. These two are the leads in um, collecting and preserving and sharing Polynesian written records. So take out those databases. Family search is for free. Ancestry, you have to pay a subscription, but both are wonderful. I use them both equally for my research. The next is to take a look at national archives. So look within your respective countries. Um, Hawaiians, they generally look at the National Archives here in America because we are under American rule. Um, you can look at New Zealand. They have their own archives, National Archives, Solomon Islands, all these other places, Fiji and stuff. They have their own National Archives as well. Another great place is the University of Hawaii, namely Hawaii Nui Akea, which is their Hawaiian School of Knowledge. I love this place. I love the people there and what they do. They bring in and invite the leading experts throughout all of Oceania to have free webinars with them every week, once a week, usually on Wednesdays, I believe. And you can check out their website to access all the videos that they've made so far. And you can even go on live with them. So check them out. They are awesome. The next Pacific Manuscripts Bureau, they are a wonderful nonprofit that goes around all of Oceania and captures copies and microfilms these rare manuscripts throughout all of the Pacific, right? So they have um, partnerships with many libraries and universities throughout Oceania, and they are a wonderful resource to take a look at. So go ahead and hop on there, and they have great research guides as well to show you how to research their collections. Next, Archives New Zealand. I can't get over how wonderful they are. Again, they have incredible resources for your Maori ancestors. So take a look at them. And then lastly, I got to give a shout out to my local libraries. So all the librarians out there deserve to go straight to heaven after they die because they are amazing record keepers. So we have university libraries, there's state, island and village libraries, 
And I'm not just talking about libraries that carry physical books. People are libraries as well. So the chiefs of your villages, the heads of your family, the elders of the family, they are living libraries. So go talk to them, okay? Maybe they have stuff written down that you don't know of. Next, I want to talk about oral genealogies. So oral genealogies, we talked about the functions of genealogies, and that is consistent across the board, that genealogies determined everything in your life, and they were functions of society. But one notable collection that I want to highlight is the Cole Jensen Collection. They are under Family Search. Um, a collection that is housed by Family Search, I should say. Um, I have no relation to this Jensen in the collection, but I would say, though, that it is the largest collection of Pacific Island genealogies, um, mainly from Pacific Islander members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The collection was um, created and curated from the 1930s, 60s, so quite a long span of time, right? And again, it's available to view um, the genealogies are and even the digital images of the pedigree charts and family group sheets on Family Search. So take a look there, and it's all for free. Shout out for all the free stuff. All right, lastly, we need to talk about recording your histories. You need to take the time to record your history. And you know what, I'm gonna say this out there, I don't care how you record your history, but you need to record it because you matter and your story matters and your histories are important. They have, they will be a blessing to your posterity. This is a picture here of my grandma, me, and my little boy, Yosefa. And I'm so glad we took this picture. This was about four years ago. And, you know, I haven't been able to see my grandma for years and I miss her dearly. She's back home in Hawaii. But I love this picture. This was a capture in a moment of time that was pre-turmoil, pre-pandemic. And, um, you know, when she, when she leaves this earth, I will have this to treasure forever, right? And my posterity will too. So be a good ancestor now and record your histories. Because being a good ancestor now can change the way and the direction your posterity goes. So choose to be a blessing, choose to be a good ancestor, take the time to record your history and um, bless them and bless your ancestors at the same time. So if you're interested to learn more and want to connect with me, I have a bunch of social media here. So go ahead, screenshot this, follow me, add me. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and TikTok. So the first three, I have the same handle, the Polynesian Genealogist. And Twitter, I'm at Mia Jensen. But I also have here my contact information for my website and my email address. I openly share content all the time on my social media and even in, through correspondences via email on my website. I'm more than happy to connect with you. And if you have more questions, you're more than welcome to hit me up. And I hope to hear from you all soon. And I hope that your experience here has been good and uplifting and something that you needed and could help you in your journey. So mahalo, everybody. Thank you again for coming to Roots Tech Connect. Hope you have a wonderful time. And I hope to see you all later. Bye, everyone.